Okay, next bit of news to talk about here. Interesting developments courtesy of Hypebeast concerning the great and the powerful Supreme. It looks like Tremaine Emeroy has been named as a new creative director of Supreme. That came out of absolute nowhere. I had no idea they were even hiring. Oh my God. Um, oh, come on. Why is it loading? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, interesting news, right? Interesting news regarding this because um, I don't think anyone had any idea that this position was even open, that they were looking for somebody. Um, it came out of left field, especially considering the person they picked. I don't think anyone would have kind of chosen to remain um, ahead of his appointment. So maybe that's the whole point of it. It's actually an interesting choice. Maybe it's going to refresh the brand somewhat, inject some new life into it. Who knows? Who knows? So it continues. The article says as follows. According to reports, Tremaine Emeroy has now been appointed the new creative director of Supreme. Confirmed by the New York imprint, the streetwear figure that also works under his artistic moniker Denim Tears has already started his position and will be working closely with the label's design team and founder James Jebbia, the legend. Jebbia will continue to oversee Supreme in all aspects of the business, including creative. It's also been noted that Tremaine will continue to design for Denim Tears while serving as creative director for Supreme. So he's got two gigs at the same damn time time the major development comes after vf court purchased supreme for 2.1 billion usd back in 2020 the sale of the brand saw many fans question if supreme could maintain this pinnacle in streetwear with the appointment of tremaine the multidisciplinary creative will be tasked with bolstering supreme's roots while progressing the imprint so a very big job very big boots to fill um what are my thoughts my thoughts are as follows i would have never guessed somebody with Tremaine's sort of um what would you say aesthetic and the kind of given the kind of closely designs for denim tears would be a really good fit for supreme but given his kind of roots in new york given his roots in the streetwear community um given his roots to that whole kind of um what they call retail mafia crew from back in the day it does make a lot of sense because if there's one thing about supreme they always tend to hire within they always tend to hire. Oh, sorry, I didn't put the thing up. They always tend to hire within the kind of supreme ecosystem, right? So if you're somebody that's a friend of a friend, somebody that's worked in a store from back then, who did this, who did that, they always tend to kind of look out for you in that regard. So that's a really good thing in that in that in that interest. Sometimes they can be a bit limited. I feel like in terms of the in terms of what they're able to put out, because if you're only limiting the field of people who work for you to friends of friends, that could negatively. I feel like. Uh, reflecting the products and what you're putting out because there's no real fresh ideas for the outside coming in but so far it's worked for them 20 plus years in the game smashing it they don't need me to give them advice on how they could have progressed their brand cool all right safe the interesting thing about it i think is that it feels like there have been a few creative directors so far at supreme or people that have worked under that kind of moniker as a kind of a because it feels like every couple of decades or every couple of five years there's always one person who kind of acts as the kind of I won't say the face. Yeah, maybe let's say the face of the, of the design team of Supreme because already James Jebbia is a face. So my nose is... Ah, these allergies. So you got James Jebbia as the face, but he doesn't really pop pop out anywhere. And he's very private in that regard as a founder. And apart from that, all you got are the models and the people who kind of are around that kind of store or that brand, right? The kind of people that do the collaborations, the people that have been featured in the lookbooks, the catalogs works in the store back in the day those are the who you kind of deem as a face but usually the design faces i felt like have changed quite frequently maybe a little bit too much if you're being overly critical because i remember who was it that angelo guy from awake was what was kind of the face at one point then he obviously moved on to do awake full time before that i think it was brendan babsian at noah he moved on to do that full time before that, there was another guy too, uh, like Walter, Max, Wolf. I don't know, some of those kind of names. Um, he was before that as well. Yeah, I remember there was another guy, like some some other white dude. He was also kind of the the kind of the face of the design team. Not sure if he's still there. So I don't know if this is a a position they're struggling to fill, or if the boots are too big to fill. Or maybe it's a role that you could only do for a short period of time. I don't know. Demand to be. I don't know. But it seems that people are kind of cycling in quite quickly through that kind of in that role as a kind of face of as a face of it. But given how he kind of works, 
given how he carries himself with Tremaine, maybe he might be the long-term sort of person to kind of guide him forward. And maybe the fact that they've kind of given him the creative director role, because I don't think, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think those other guys were creative directors. They might have been like fashion design leads or whatever. I don't think they had the creative director role. So the fact that he's a creative director role, kind of overseeing the overall communication and sort of brand, whatever, of what they're trying to put out, that gives it a little bit more scope to be a little bit more long term because if you don't there's no point getting a creative director to do a job for five years you need to think five ten years forward you know what i mean so that makes complete sense and also for people like myself long term long long time supreme fans you know first bit of supreme i purchased was like when 20 2007 or some shit right for someone like myself who's kind of been a bit concerned about the direction of the brand and felt like they were going a bit too logo heavy they were kind of trying to market too much to the kids. They were really forgetting about people like myself who basically have kind of grown up with the brand over the years and don't really see themselves reflecting their brand too much anymore. It's great to have somebody like him in place because I feel like he might be able to address the balance a little bit and kind of hopefully bring it back to what it was in the past, maybe like five, ten years ago, where they were consistently, every collection had like at least 10 plus things that you would want to wear immediately. Whereas nowadays, I feel like there's some stuff in there, don't get me wrong, but it's not as like instant cop sort of stuff. Sort of instant running to go and get this or get that. You can get it on resale. You can maybe find it in a store. The impetus, the kind of desire to kind of go for those kind of things has kind of waned over the years. Now, it might be because of me as well. My buying decisions have kind of changed. But I think overall, the allure of the brand has somewhat waned over the years. Now, it could be because of the you know the buyout it could be because of the fact that it's been hyped now and all the kids are jumping onto it and i'm and i'm a and i'm deep down i'm a flipping hipster and i don't want all the kids to get on it because i wanted to keep it as my own little private thing who knows but in general i do feel like there has been a little bit too much attention being paid to the kind of gen z sort of type customer and not enough being paid to the quote-unquote millennials or the kids like myself who kind of came up with supreme at a particular age let's say 18 19 and kind of grew up with the brand you know like i got my first t-shirt my first hoodie box logo camp cat backpack waist bag collaboration sneakers north face and then slowly but surely i've kind of progressed to getting like you know m m m65 jackets from supreme denim pants like like my kind of my wardrobe has matured as the brand's matured but nowadays i feel like with the exception of some suits and some you know old overcoats most of the stuff that's in their collection is mostly geared around people who are like 25 years old and under which might be their target demographic but i always felt like the power of supreme for me was the fact that but yeah, the, power, the, the the most powerful era for me Supreme was when Aaron Bondaroff used to model for them because at the time Aaron Bondaroff if I'm not mistaken was in his mid 30s or something right but he didn't look like an adult hype beast when he wore Supreme he didn't look like that he just looked like a cool older dude wearing some cool older some cool, wearing some cool clothes whereas I feel like nowadays if you try to put Aaron Bondaroff in the stuff that they make now he would look a little bit like a cartoon you look a little bit you look a little bit like crazy right um so maybe that appointment can address some of those balances coming up it can address some of that imbalance coming up in the future but um yeah man happy for the guy well done congratulations um i've kind of known him sparingly from afar for a very long time um i actually got my first sort of like major important cd job working at 1948 through his friend a side who unfortunately i had a falling out with because you know if you know that guy personally outside of if you or if, if, for those of you who know that guy personally you'll know that he's not the easiest person to get along with and for me as a person i also didn't play my role correct in that situation because i felt like at the time i started to realize what was needed to get forward in that streetwear scene and i wasn't willing to do it what was needed was for you to be a little bit subservient to kind of, what, what was that phrase Ace used to say? Oh, to pay your dues, right? That was what leads to kind of get forward. And, 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 and if anything, it's, it's been proven right because everyone that kind of paid their dues, who licked the asses of the right people, who kind of just kept, you know, kept themselves around, they've mostly have been give, given a decent position. But I didn't want to do that because I just don't have it in me. Not because I think I'm better or anything, I just don't have it in me. I can't, I can't be that person. 
which is why I enjoy doing this so much, right? Because I get to kind of do my own thing, which is why obviously I enjoy the DJ things also because I get to do my own thing. Like, I just can't be that guy. So that obviously didn't work and then that relationship fell off. You know, it, it, it just it just went left. It went very left. No need to go road, go down old, you know, go down a memory lane on that one. Um, but I've known, I've kind of seen the guy around for a while. So he's legit as they come. So especially if you take my opinion when it comes to streetwear seriously and you think I speak some sense in that field, which I don't think so. But if you do think so, then I can definitely tell you that Supreme is definitely in good hands if he's going to be the creative director. And I also think for kids coming up, people like myself, it should also be really inspiring that somebody that I kind of saw coming up you know, at the same sort of time, kind of, has now progressed into this kind of level of position. It shows what's possible. If you put your best foot forward and if you do what Virgil and Kanye have kind of done in the past, where they've learned out loud, they've learned in public and they've failed in public. I think that's a really important part, being able to kind of show your work. I think it's all well and good having PSD files and line sheets like I do of, of stuff in your flipping hard drive. But unless people see it, touch it, feel it, they're not going to be able to know what you're about, what your taste level's like, what you're into, what your interests are, your skill level. It's not going to be on display. And I think there's a lot of people like that, similar to me, who kind of have that kind of, there's nothing outwards to show your creativity. And I think you need to do that quickly, you know, fast, if you, if you, if you, if you really want to get forward in life. Because as it's been proven, you know, he starts his brand, he does this Denim Tears brand, which, you know, there's some stuff in it I like, some stuff I'm not really a fan of. But through just being able to display his ideas with that brand, I'm sure was able to kind of get him in certain rooms with certain people because it kind of showed you that that was basically a living, breathing, flipping CV or portfolio of like, here is what I can do with limited resources. Here's what I can do with this size of a team. Here's what I can do with this years of experience. Give me a bigger playground. Give me more tools to use and I'm going to fit this out of the park. Do you know what I mean? That's what it kind of proves in that regard. So it's really cool to see, super inspiring. I um, can't wait to see what he does first in terms of the first sort of like changes we see with Supreme coming forward. I'm sure we're going to probably see them, I guess, I'd assume, we'll probably see that in what? Full winter 2024 or something. I'd, I'd imagine maybe he's fierce his first sort of outing maybe i'm not too sure but we're definitely gonna be able to see that coming up very very soon so keep an eye on that if you're that way inclined keep an eye on that if you're that way inclined